Hi and welcome back to Bike Speed. So this week we're going to be sorting out this Boardman mountain bike. Now the great thing about this was the owner of this bike commented on our YouTube, I think it was last week on one of our videos that he was going to bring this bike in and sure enough it arrived in the shop so it was great to sort of have a connection to YouTube to this bike. Now as you can see this bike currently is totally unrideable, the chain has seized up and we've got this very stiff notchy bottom bracket bearing here it was completely seized up so uh, headset bearings were a little bit tight but when this bike came in I kind of assessed what needed doing I knew it needed a chain knew it needed the bottom bracket bearing the brakes were just non-existent they weren't working at all so we sort of begin to build up a picture when the when the bike initially comes in the shop of the work we're going to need to do and we sort of price that up accordingly leaving a little bit of leeway of, of pricing to allow for any unexpected. But the one thing I did notice with this bike, you can see here how immaculately clean the bike actually is. I sort of began to build a picture of this bike in that I don't think this bike has actually been ridden much. I think it's a bike that someone has, has you know, brought, got hold of and maybe not used initially. It's been stored probably in damp conditions. You can see the amount of spiders webs on here and that has allowed this bottom bracket to completely seize up on itself for whatever reason you know you, you kind of get a, a randomness of repairs needed to a bike that's sat some parts will withstand that sitting around for decades without deteriorating and then something else such as the bottom bracket here the damper's got in there it's probably rusted the ball bearings seized it right up and that needs sorting out I wonder whether it might have been because of these brakes that this bike was initially took off the road. You can see how rusty this is. Again, that's from being sat in damp conditions. So we'll clean the back of those pads up. But what I did notice when we were bleeding these brakes, these are a, a dot fluid, brake fluid in these, dot 5.1. And I noticed with the dot fluid, it will corrode paint. And I noticed around the brake levers themselves, there was signs or evidence of corrosion where that fluid had leaked out. So I have a feeling at some point in the past this bike, someone may have tried to bleed the brakes, maybe not have been successful, and then the bike has been put to one side and has stood. Now, great for us, this customer then found our YouTube channel and was watching our videos, put that comment in last week that he was bringing this bike in and it spurred him on to bring the bike in to get it roadworthy again. And that's what we're trying to achieve with this service. So this wasn't a full strip down restoration. This was purely a service to get this bike roadworthy and suitable for riding again, which was the brief of the job to, you know, effectively get this usable. So that's what we're doing now. So we've stripped down the group set, even though this is a standard service, we're going to clean everything up as we would normally even with the detailing, but just not quite going that in-depth level of a full detail. So we're just going to be servicing the parts. So clean off those jockey wheels. We don't get those through the ultrasonic cleaner because they have their own bearings in those. We don't want to flush out that bearing oil and greases. So we just clean those up on the bench, a little bit of lubricant on the back of those plates that go each side of the bearing. They sort of support the bearings just to stop them corroding or sticking or anything like that in the future. So we get everything on that derailleur back in and then we lubricate the derailleur because these parts were very, very dry. Obviously where they had sat for years, everything on it was a little bit dry on this bike, a little bit of surface rust that doesn't do any harm, you know, like I say, it's not a restoration, it's about getting it working. So now the headset bearing was stiff. I had sort of allowed possibly for replacing these headset bearings, but actually they were just pretensioned too much. It's a very common thing on a on this type of headset bearing where they're just pretensioned too much. So they're tight from day one. And actually there's nothing wrong with the bearings. And like I say, this bike, you can see from these pads as I clean them up, how little wear there is on those pad surfaces themselves. So it all portrays a picture to me that this bike hasn't done much mileage you can see there i just use a bit of brake cleaner because this is dot 5.1 you always want to keep this clean don't let that dot fluid sit on the bike in any way because it will corrode the paint so fresh dot fluid into there so we use the double syringe method on this particular brake set clean again clean off make sure there's none of that residue left on there at all and these brakes brakes were absolutely spot on so i cleaned the pads i bled them down i cleaned the discs and those brakes were as new when they when the bike was collected so it went from having no brakes at all to good good braking power and we're just washing the bike down again with these rock shocks you know i can tell the bike's not done much mileage they were actuating correctly so there was no need to strip those down no need to service them you know it would have been servicing for servicing sake and and it just wasn't necessary 
So again, you kind of, you get a feel for a bike like this, whereby some parts have not withstood the sands of time of being sat and other parts are like new still. So you can see from, from the way this bike's cleaning up how actually good condition the bike was. So last week we had fantastic comments on the YouTube channel. We really did get, you know, a lot of feedback from you all, but there were just one or two negatives towards the way the customer looked after their bikes and so on. Please don't do that. You know, it's, it's great that people lend us bikes to film for YouTube. You know, a lot of people are as excited about getting a film videoed as we are to do it. It's a great process for both parties involved because we like to give something a little bit extra to the bikes that we film as a thank you to that customer. And likewise, they get a little video that they can enjoy. It's not for us to criticize the way a bike is, is maintained or used or owned. We're just pleased that people are willing to lend us bikes on YouTube. So enjoy the videos, but there's no need to leave negative comments about the way a, a bike is maintained. So you can see here when I cleaned up that hub, how immaculate that looked, that free hub body, it, it, it was as new and a little bit of surface rust on these discs. Again, there wasn't much pitting or, or scoring on this disc. It just needed a little bit of a clean up and a little bit of wire wool on them arms. I just did that just to take that rusty surface off. So it really brought those up nice. Look at that, that hub there. Look, I mean, that is as new. You can really tell this bike has done very, very little mileage. The wheel bearings felt all okay on this one too, but You've seen on my other videos, I do like to line these logos up above the valve. It kind of centers everything up. It's just a nice, pleasing to the eye. And it's just something that I like to do, you know, when, when possible, I'll just turn a tire. So that's what I'm now going to do. Actually, the front one was actually lined up. So that wasn't, that was all right. That was good. But this one, it just wasn't quite. It's a good way of sort of telling where a puncture is as well. If you get a puncture, you can, you can line it up with the valve and you know where that was. So if you've got the same puncture, you would think, oh, that was in the same place as last time and you could check the wheel in the correct place because you've lined up the logo. So on goes that cassette. You can see, I mean, that cassette is, is as new really, you know, again, no mileage on that whatsoever. The hub is good. The bearings are good. We talk up to 40 newton meters, talk up the bolts that hold the disc on just to make sure they're all okay, which they were. And then we put in our new bottom bracket. So a little bit of um, anti-seize grease on the threads. And then we talk that up. You've got left and right handed torque here. Our torque wrench does both left and right handed torques. Not all torque wrenches you buy will do that. So 40 newton meters for that bottom bracket. And in goes that lovely bottom bracket. That was actually a rotor bottom bracket we fitted to this, which I've been using those quite a lot recently and they are lovely bottom brackets that they produce. So we're just putting on the derailleurs now, getting everything back together. We're reusing the cables because again, you know, there was no corrosion on those. They all ran smoothly through the outers. Everything felt okay. But that does just make it a little bit fiddly at times to get back together because they're not new but in this case they went back together nicely i put a little bit of grease on the back of those pads just to stop that corrosion from biting in again at any point in the future and a little bit of grease on the pivot of those pads there just to help everything actuate nicely and those brakes really felt quite good when they went out a new chain on here although i probably could have cleaned up the rust on the old one it was very seized on a couple of couple of the links and I don't think it would have really have been a successful chain to continue using. I think the rust was too ingrained into that chain. I think it would have either worn very quickly or snapped or so. I felt a good, you know, good practice here was a new chain. So customer also asked me just to swap these grips for new ones. So we put new grips on there. A little bit of anti-seize grease on the, the threads for the bottle cage, just so that if ever that comes on and off in the future, that should help. And then we just work our way through the bike with the torque wrench. It's kind of like the last phase. Also lined up and tightened up the bell. You know, it's just little things like that. Just the little details that make the bike absolutely spot on and feel like a new bike when he starts riding it again. So we go through everything with the torque wrench. All the nuts and bolts that we can reach and get to, we, we torque up and make sure they're all, all correct. A lot of these parts will have those torque wrench settings on them. A lot of them you learn by experience, you know, size of bolts and everything else and what they're going into, aluminium, stainless steel and so on. So do the pedals up, do all the brakes up. Everything's nice now. We did just reinflate the forks. They were a little bit low. We inflated those to 100 PSI, which was sort of the mid range of the recommended PSI pressures that were actually printed on the forks. And you can see what a difference from the before and afters. You know, we've gone from a bike that is unusable, unrideable, unsafe, to a bike that is now safe, rideable, and usable for a daily, daily run. So thanks again for watching. Do like, do subscribe, do drop your comment in the comments below. Thank you to this customer for lending us this bike. 
and we'll see you again next week. So have a good week. Bye for now.